I want to share with you a short word. Once again, also from a day word that I had. Luke 18. If you can go with me to Luke 18. We see Jesus speaking to the rich young man. Here is a man that really worked hard. Here is a man that gave himself. Here is a man that accomplished a lot. And we can say, and based on his success, he's enjoying his success in what he, what he got as a rich young man. It wasn't like he was just spoiled. It wasn't like he had this major attitude. And here Jesus would come and say, that what you received, give it all up. Give it all up and follow me. Sounds a little bit unfair. You know, this other guy, he had nothing and he's following Jesus. Okay. But I really worked hard. I gave my everything. And then Jesus would come and say, give it all up. My brother, my sister, we can have success in our lives. But also God would want to protect us against the the fruit of success. The success that we're supposed to enjoy according to Ecclesiastes. It says that we must enjoy the fruit of our labor. We must enjoy life. I've seen one thing that was good. And that is that man can enjoy his life. God has given you and what he has given you it is so that you can enjoy it with him. Amen? But with it, so easily, we can be entangled. Like Israel, when in trouble, they cried out to the Lord. God delivered them. And then they saw prosperity. And in the prosperity, instead of enjoying prosperity with God, their heart would go away with God. Prosperity is very dangerous. Prosperity can be very dangerous, but even though God so really wants to give it to you, But your definition of prosperity, you need to understand that. Yes, it can be a billion dollars. But in all of that then, what must you do? How must that billion dollars serve you and the kingdom? Amen? God must show us. But every time when they saw prosperity, their heart turned away from God. It is written down as examples for us, the word says. So that we can learn from it. Amen. So God saying to this, this young man. Sell everything. Everything you achieved. Everything you received through that what you achieved. Get rid of it. So that your heart is with me and me alone. The danger of success. The danger of prosperity. May God help you. So that when God is making you prosperous and he wants to make you prosperous, that is part of who he is and what he wants for his children. I'm not talking about prosperity teaching. Clickety-click and then you just have it. No, not, not talking about that. Is it not someone? Blessed is the man who walk in the council of the counselor, walk standing in the way called Jesus Christ and sitting in the seat with Christ in the heavenly places. He is. We'll be getting into his word. We will meditate on the word. Meditate. And everything that he does will prosper. Prosper. Prosperity from your hand. But the prosperity that must flow from your hand is because of you taking counsel of Holy Spirit. Standing in Christ. Seated with Christ in heavenly places. Meditating on his word. There is a prosperity coming from that. And you must find the definition of that prosperity. Because you can be prosperous in certain ways where God would say, give it up and then follow me. You can sit in the prosperity. You can be very prosperous in a lot of things that you do. Where if you really come to Christ and say, God, yes, I do this, I do that, I do that. And in your walk with God, you can say, I'm doing this, 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 this. And God tells you, excellent. Excellent. One thing you lack, your prosperity, your prosperity is standing between me and you. Get rid of it. Give it up and then come and follow me. So may God help us because 
Now you can say, no, I, I don't know if that's a problem because he's not like I'm sitting with a lot of money and a lot of this and a lot of that, a lot of that. It's first the thing in your, in your heart. If you have 10 rand in the bank or 10 billion, it's a thing in the heart. It's a thing in the heart. Are you with me? And to say, God, is that thing here where I don't have the capacity to be prosperous with a focus on you? I need to understand how to be prosperous with a focus on you. And I need to find a prosperity where the definition of that prosperity is the result because of a life with someone. You remember someone? That's also part of my day with in this week. Someone, counsel of Holy Spirit, standing in the way, Jesus Christ. That means stand in his strategy, seated with Christ in heavenly places. Hello? Meditate day and night, day and night on his word. Why? Because I must study at Kriari and do 60 scriptures. No. Because I want to get into his word. I want to get into his word. May God help you that you will have such a desire. That you will not flirt around with your heart. That you will not flirt around with your heart. Looking your, with your heart as if it's cheap. Don't, I don't know what's the word, prostitute your heart, uh, something like that. Don't let your heart, just, you go with whatever comes. Your heart can be contaminated, you can have int your heart can have intimacy here, intimacy there, intimacy with greed, intimacy with, with aggression, intimacy with uh, temper, intimacy with self Self-righteousness, intimacy with, intimacy with whatever. Your heart can have intimacy all over. God help me, God help you. Amen. No, your heart is precious to God. Your heart is precious to God. So I cannot have that way. But with my heart, I cannot put it in my soul. Is you have a heart in your body, but in your heart... You can make sure that your heart is in the place where there's perfection and beauty. That is your spirit. Or your heart is in a place where in the emotional roller coaster, your emotions is taking control of your heart or your perspective or the judgment or the depression or the negativity or the superiority or the self-image. Oh, and you flirt with your heart through your soul into a lot of rubbish. You can be deceived. And the one that can deceive you the most, the most, the most, the most, according to the word of God, is your heart. Therefore, what must you guard most of all, according to the word? Your heart. Because God wants your heart. And because he knows you can easily play with your heart. His, your love for him. God says, I want to see how you take your heart. That so easily can just go here, there, 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 there. Even while you're singing the song on a Sunday. Then you learn how to let your heart go wherever. That your heart is not involved when you focus on him with that song. Why the second time the song? Why the third time the song? Because you're going to learn with the second time and the third time how to put your heart just there between you and God. Worship in spirit and in truth. But from my spirit and from the word of God and God, what is in the middle is my heart. From my heart, I worship you. And it's because my heart is in the place where my spirit and the truth is taking it and bringing worship that is acceptable to the Father. The worship that he desires. Put your heart into that place. Because your heart is precious. Don't throw the, the pearls to the swine. And the biggest thing from your heart. God wants your heart. Amen. He showed you his heart. And he explained his heart how? Through his son Jesus Christ. Nobody has seen the father but Jesus that came from the bosom of the father. He came and he made him known. He showed the heart of the father. Are you with me? Now with my heart, I can flirt around. Now, 
and I can be deceived. But in the deception and how I flirt with my heart is, uh, I want to use the word apathy. Hopelessness, apathy. Um, somebody give me a definition of apathy from a dictionary or, or Mrs. Google. Um, yeah. Apathy. He just came up. Um, okay, go for it. Lack of interest, enthusiasm, or concern. Indifferent. Indifferent. And that is, my brother, my sister, when there's not hope. When I'm in a place of hopelessness. Hopelessness is not, first of all, just connected with negativity and depression. Negativity and depression. But how I can be deceived to walk in this hopelessness, the church, is just going through the motions. I'm flowing through, in between. That what is actually life. I'm not having the life in Christ. I'm not living the life in Christ. I'm flowing in between. There's not really enthusiasm about the word. There's not really that passion, that drive in it. Some could say I'm coping. But with coping, it's like I have gave place to the stress and anxiety and all this stuff and I'm coping it. I have this fight and I'm, I'm surviving in this fight. I'm coping. I'm talking in a place where you are much better than that, but you are floating. But it's like apathy. You are just going through the motions, but hope is not alive. Jesus Christ through your life. Are you with me? You cannot put your heart in that place and let your heart just float through the motions. That's a place of hopelessness. Because if you are living in Christ, your eternal hope, hope will live through you. Enthusiasm will be there. Excitement will be there. Expectation will be there. But now I got hurt in relationships. I got hurt when I put it out in faith. I got hurt when... When I stepped out in faith and did a lot of stuff. And so I don't backslide. I don't turn my back on the word. I'm just coming into this place where I'm floating. I smile, do the right stuff. Yes, I remember I must have time with the Lord. And, but my heart with life, with excitement is not involved. There's no real interaction with God, myself, the word and people. Now you see how your relationships with people will be. How are you really involved with people? That will show you how you are involved with God. Not really involved with people, you're not involved with God. Because God is involved with people. The comparison always. You say you love God but you hate your neighbor, you're a liar. No truth in you. Truth is not living in you. Because if you love God, you, you will not hate your brother. You will not have the issue with your brother. And say, I have no issue with God. But there's issues between you and God. If there's issues, then here, then here, then there with people. That you have an issue with them. And the issue is not, I have bitterness, I have unforgiveness, I have hate, I have judgment, I have this, I have that. No, no. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about flowing around them with a big smile. And that's the deception. Deception from a place of actually hopelessness in relationship. Because if there's real, real relationship, my brother, you are enthusiastic about people around you. There's a passionate love for them. But first of all, for yourself. Because you can only love them as you love yourself. Hey, greatest commandment. So God, fill me with your love so that I can know how to love myself, but not live with myself. I'm going through the motions. No, you will not just go through the motions anymore. Show me, show me how to find hope in you. 
to find hope in you. Are you with me? So that your prosperity will come from him. Your pros- prosperity will encourage you to grow in him. What will protect your heart in the place of prosperity always will be thankfulness. Remember that. Write that down. Thankfulness will protect you in prosperity. Thankfulness. Because thankfulness, true thankfulness, I'm not talking about good manners. I'm talking about true thankfulness. is because of a revelation that who I am, what I have is only because of God's grace. So if you are captured by God's grace, knowing that your prosperity is not, first of all, your success. It's His success in you. Based on His enablement that He gave you, His enablement is His grace. Paul says, I have worked hard. I have laid excellent foundations. But not me. But the grace of God that He has given me. It was His grace. It was His enablement that did it. Amen. Live into that place so that your prosperity, your success, is not a thing when you come closer to God and you hear His voice, God will say, take it away. And then come close and then follow me. No, man. Your success, your prosperity, many times it can be based on your anointing and your abilities and your skill. And your hard work and your faithfulness. Oh, come on, man. And your faithfulness. Remember, a rich young man, I've done this, 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 this. And God doesn't say it means nothing. He didn't say that. He said, that is great. Great, great, great. So all of this is good. Just do another thing. Your success and your prosperity standing between you and me. Oh, don't waste, let's not waste our lives in Jesus' name. Because that's in actually where he goes away and what is happening. I'm just, I'm just going on, but I'm not going for this accurate, intimate walk with Christ. I will, I will go through. But how involved are you in the church? In your spiritual family. How involved are you with brothers and sisters? How involved are you in ministering? How involved are you with people at the workplace? That's on their way to go and burn in hell. How involved are you with them? Do they know the truth? Because there's an enthusiasm in you. No, but this is not my personality. God used me according to my personality. I'm not a people person. Okay, I hear what you say. But now we can define the person that died on the cross. That is you in Christ. The one that didn't, that's not supposed to rise again. Are you with me? (laughs) Death has lost its victory. Your flesh has lost its victory over you. Are you with me? But according to my personality. Or maybe according to God's personality. No, I'm not, I'm not first of all a leader. I will serve. Serve them in your leadership. You're a leader. Then serve them. By leading accurately. Are you with me? No. I'm not a people person. I'm more in the background. I'm really just serving. But if the people person in the person of Christ... Who is living in you. And he is really a people. He's really wanting to be involved with people. Will he be allowed. By your personality. To work through you. Or will personality decide. What Christ will do in you. How he will be allowed to work in you. Through you. And how he will not be allowed to work in and through you. It's not his personality. That will come through first of all. It's your personality, and God will use you according to your personality. He will not do the Father's will according to his personality. So if God, the leader in you, wants to, you to stand up and speak into that situation, you better rise up and speak if you have respect for Christ, the leader. If Christ, the servant of all, 
want you to be silent and just to serve. Okay, you will be a slave. You want to be, and be under the curse of slavery if it's a moan and a groan. But if you see it as Christ the leader in you, then it's an honor to serve. Because what you do, you do as if unto the Lord. And then it's an honor to serve. No, but they are not saying thank you. They're walking over me. How can they walk over you? It's impossible. Because it's Christ the leader in you. And it's Christ the servant in you. And you do it as if unto the Lord. Did the, did the Lord walk over you? I, th we, I thought I was doing it for the Lord. But not anymore. The moment that they walked over you, didn't say thank you, didn't appreciate what you were doing, you got an issue. And his personality then would decide what Christ will be allowed to do you know, through my life. Because I'm in an offense. I'm so easy to say what the others did wrong. But I am in some hell of a pathetic offense. Where Christ does not have the right to do what he wants to do in me. Because I am in control of my personality. No, we never think like that. It's very subtle. That personality will let me flow through life. And not having life. You, are, you have freedom. You have a freedom. Now, what will you do with the freedom, Paul asked? Will you use it just to sin and sin and sin again? What will you do with the freedom? Freedom what? You're out of hell. You're out of the kingdom of darkness into his marvelous light. You have a freedom. What are you going to do with your freedom? You're going to have a life because you have freedom. Freedom means there's an authority that gave you the freedom to do the following. You've been given authority. You've been given the room. You've been given the opportunity to do the following. That is called freedom. Freedom. Freedom to vote. Freedom to, to have this. Freedom uh, for education. Freedom. I have opportunity. 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 God says in Christ, you have opportunity. But what are you going to do with the opportunity? You're going to use it for what? Freedom. To come into the place of truth. The truth will set you free. But then what you do with the freedom. The truth that set you free is God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. I took the truth. I believed the truth. And I became a child of God. Hello? But now, what will set me free. Or what will give me further opportunity. Or what I must live by is the next level of truth. 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 But I don't get into the word. I don't know what to do with my freedom. Don't get into the word. You don't know what to do with freedom. Many Christians, they understand freedom. But they don't know what to do with freedom. That is what you learn in the word because of truth. You know the truth. You know the truth. Because you have opportunity to live in the truth. You have opportunity to live according to the truth. Are you with me? Joseph, Genesis 50, 20. With his brothers there, you intended to harm me. You all remember that one? This is the facts you intended to harm me, but God, but God, but God organized for his nation to have food in a time of famine. He understood the truth. He had the freedom to take them and throw them in jail and lock the key away and he will be right and they are wrong. And all Egypt will understand that he was right. He had the freedom to do that. But he looked into the truth of what was God's will. Are you with me? You can have the freedom to do a lot of stuff. And you can flirt around with your heart in that place of freedom. It's okay. You are here, but your heart is not in the worship. You are here, but you are not focused in the truth. You don't put your heart in what we are talking about. So that truth will fill you, your heart. And truth is, a result is freedom. And freedom is opportunity for truth. You are free to receive the truth. God has set you free. Because if you are bound, you cannot understand truth. Truth set you free so that in freedom you can receive the word. 
daily, daily, daily. And you can grow, 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 grow. So there's two concepts, freedom and truth. Truth originally set you free. And then what do you do with the freedom? You grow into the truth, into the truth, into the truth. So I have a freedom, me, Mr. Joseph. I'm telling you the facts. And I will be right in locking you up for the rest of your life. But I know the truth. And I find myself in the truth. When you find yourself in the truth, it will always have an impact on everybody around you. It will have an impact on everybody around you. But you just find yourself in freedom. And you know about the truth. You know about the truth. You study the scriptures because in Kriari you must study scriptures. Or you study scripture because you know you're supposed to. But when you jump into the scripture and let it live in you, and you live in the scripture, and you're alive, and there's interaction with it, there's quality. There's quality coming forth. There's truth. And his name is Jesus Christ that's coming forth. It's not freedom in Freedom that Christ is giving you. You are in Christ the truth. And the truth is living through you. And you are living in the truth called Jesus Christ. It's, it's more. And God wants to set us aside. He wants to stabilize us. My brother, my sister, prophetically, God is saying in this season, He wants to stabilize the church. He wants them to understand what to do with their freedom. To get into him. Life hidden in Christ. Now go and get it. It cannot stay hidden. Your life in Christ must be revealed. Holy Spirit and the word will open it up for you. Ach, yeah. And we can flow through a scripture and through a teaching and through a preaching. I've heard it before. But I am not... I mean apathy. Say again, not enthusiastic, not, not interested. It's not like you said, it's boring. It's not like sometimes, my children. So how was it? It was boring. Okay. May God help me. <laughs> what am I saying? No concern. This interest. No concern. Concern is not, you're supposed to worry about it. You know? Somebody worry about something and then you say, no, they have a concern for that person. They worry about the person. No. You're not supposed to be in fear, anxiety, and all that stuff because you cannot trust God with a person. No, this concern, this concern is, I'm involved with you. You are involved with me. You are involved with your brother and your sister. Not to worry. Because that will bring nothing. That worry is the opposite of prayer. Be anxious of nothing. Worry. Leave that worry, that concern in the wrong way. Leave it. And come with prayer before the Lord. Amen. And the prayer and that concern that he talks about is, you hear about something, you just put it in prayer before the Lord. Now, first of all, it won't suffocate you because you put it down before the Lord. The concern that you had, the fact that there's a compassion, compassion, compassion. There's an involvement. Now, if it's the wrong involvement and the concern that brings the worry, it will suffocate you. People will suffocate you. You will drown and suffocate with the things of people and the things they do wrong and the things that they struggle with and Hello, you will suffocate in it. But if it's the right concern, it's a concern because I have hope for the person. I come from a place of hope. And because I have hope for that person, I have faith in that person. Because I know God has a hope for that person. Because his name is Jesus Christ. He died for that person also. So if Christ died for that person, that means hope is there for that person. And you better find yourself in hope. And from the place of hope, have a concern for the person. You need to have hope for yourself because Christ is in you. 
Hope is in you. So you have hope for your future, hope for your relationships. Amen. And from the place of hope you pray. You have a concern, but from a place of hope. You with me? Concern from a place of hope. Not concern from a place of fear, anxiety, and stress. Don't break that covenant between the concern and the stress, concern and the fear, concern and the anxiety. You're supposed to write it down. Break that covenant. You're supposed to go and ask Holy Spirit, where, where is this in my life? Because my brother, my sister, unless you know your heart is perfect about this stuff, I'm challenging you that according to Psalm 139, search, search me and know my heart, Lord. Search me because I, you cannot search your heart and know what's happening in your heart. It's impossible. Brings me to the next part. When the disciples in Luke 18 when they heard about this and how Jesus explained how the rich man cannot easily enter the kingdom of God. And they saw this guy. They didn't just see that he was rich and, and now he cannot really enter. And now they say, oh, Lord, who can be saved? Because it wasn't like they were sitting in all these riches. Hello? But it was the fact that they heard that with this young rich man, he did all this other stuff everything he did faithfully he did correct he did he gave himself faithfully in all these other stuff and he, one thing he lacked and god says cannot enter unless he get rid of that he says oh lord i on it who when they heard this they asked who then can be saved how is it possible that we can have freedom? How is it possible that we can be saved and not stay in bondage with all this stuff? How is it possible? Jesus, what is impossible with man is possible with God. All things possible with God. And he wants to put the stuff in front of you that's impossible so that you will call on him and honor him. As the one that will make everything possible. But for you to call upon him. That can make everything possible. He must give you something impossible. Is that not logic? Not even revelation. Just plain. One plus one is two. That's not revelation. That's just logic. Are you with me? So when you stand in that place. Of impossibility. In that place. Where you think it's a devil. Well, maybe it's even God that has put that thing in front of you that looks very impossible. God is standing ready, ready for you to acknowledge that with him, all things are possible. With him, all things are possible. And in that place, you find fulfillment. Even if the impossible thing has not changed yet. You sit and you are living with a God that can make all things possible. Just like this. And it can change. Okay, so Lord, if, I must, if I'm still living in this place. Where these stuff look impossible. I will not lose hope. Because I will not turn my back on you. And you are my hope. If I turn my back on you, that means I will lose hope. And remember, hope is not depression and negativity. That is not, yeah, that's part of it. But that is not the essence of hopelessness. But that apathy of just going through the motions. I'm doing all the right stuff. I'm doing all the right stuff. But then when push will come to shove, when, when, when that moment of truth, one thing you lack. And the Holy Spirit saying, what you lack today what you lack this week, what you lack in that conversation, what you're supposed to say, the one thing you lack in that conversation now is forgiveness. <laughs> or what you lack in that conversation is believing that person. Or the lack in that conversation is 
say the following. But you walk away there like the rich young man depressed. And with other people looking at you and say, and their question was, who can be saved? Are you with me? But what I'm saying with that is not like people saying that about you. It's like they don't see the hope in you. They need to find hope through your life. That even when that one thing that you lack in that conversation, in that exam, in your study time, in your relationship, in your time of, of, of chilling. That in that part time of chilling, when you can put a flirty SMS to a lady or the lady to the guy. And you decide not to do that, but just to encourage. Or you know the Holy Spirit saying, one thing you lack, you must stop this now with that lady this phone, or this rubbish. Just stop it. The one thing you lack. But, I'm not going to stop it. I will flirt with my heart. That my, flirt, my heart will be intimate with whatever comes its way. Because in my life, my heart is not precious. But if I understand what God is saying about my heart, how he desires my heart, and how my heart to him is so precious, he wants it. Then you will not let it go through all the rubbish and the mud and throw it in the dustbin here and then pick it out of the dustbin after it has been polluted by all the... No, don't do that with your heart. Amen. Purify your hearts through the blood of Christ. Get the word in and put your heart of beauty with your spirit and with truth and spirit in your heart to worship your God where the Father is looking, desiring those children who will do it in such a way. Are we with one another? Ah, please, man. Okay. Only thing out of that chapter as part of my day word, prophetic word, I want to lift out the blind beggar receives his sight. The man, he knew Jesus. He was there. My brother, my sister, do you know that Jesus is with you? Do you know that God is with you? Hello. You can do your own thing. And, he, and then he will come with all respect like a little dog behind you. And he will come with. He will, because he will never leave you, never forsake you. But at that moment when you decide, you will have the place of honor. And you cry out to the Lord, he will be here. He will take your hand. Hello? And in some situations, you know, you're not supposed to see what's laying ahead. And he will come in front of you. It's like coming in front and he will hold your hand, but he will not have you here next to him. He will have you there. And if you will stand there and throw tantrum and... and Somebody come here. Uh, Petri, we will go. Okay. So, you, you are there. And, so we are supposed to walk together. But, but Jesus knows that what is laying ahead. And he will pull you there. That you will walk behind. And now, you are pulling in a different direction. Because you don't know what God is doing. You want to see. Are you with me? <laughs> okay. Because you want to, buy donkey. <laughs> because you would want to see. And I'm not going somewhere because I don't see where I must go. Without vision, the people perish. And I don't see the vision. I don't understand where I'm going. I don't know where I'm going. Because who's in front of me? The devil. No, Jesus. And he's taking away all the view. Because you know for your protection, he must keep you there. He must keep you there. He must keep you there. And in other cases, he must keep you next to him. So, he will take you and you will walk next to him. When he wants you to see certain things. But other times, he will make sure that you see nothing. By his grace. By his grace, he will make sure that you see nothing. But you need to hear from spirit. You need to hear from the Spirit. That's why God will say to Moses, Who are you and what will I say? Who you are and what you want to do? And God just ignore him and say, I am who I am. <laughs> he said nothing. 
I'm the God of your fathers. Abraham, Isaac, and so I will not give you a name, but I will give you the name of your, your parents. I'm the God of your parents. Uh, God, I'm very sorry, but uh, not I'm very sorry. God, I, what is your name? What is your name? And we in prayer, we will sit there and we're waiting for the name. And we're waiting upon the Lord. And Moses sitting there at the, at the Beeson bush. What's the Beeson bush? The burning, the burning bush. But it was a Beeson bush. What's a Beeson bush? Just a bush. <sighs> Whatever. <laughs> so, and he's sitting there faithfully before the Lord. He's spending time with the Lord. He's fasting even. He's doing all the stuff sitting there at, at the bush. The fire has gone out of the bush long ago. Because I'm trusting God to know his name so that when I go, I will be faithful. I will know what to do. I will know what to say. Who is this God? Because I know who I will be facing. I know Egypt. I know Pharaoh. I know the system. I know what's going to happen. I know the slavery. I know the beatings. I know the unfairness and how the oppression and everything that happened there. I know that. And here I stand before God. I ask him his name. He don't even tell me really his name. Hello? And out of fear and anxiety and stress. In the name of fear and anxiety and stress. You call it. I have time with God. I'm waiting on the law. That God is not there anymore. He wants you to go. By faith. So, in so many things, my brother and my sister, we get mixed up with a, from a place of apathy, where we are not standing up, and from a place of hope, the place of, I know this God, who is my hope, he will reveal himself. He will reveal himself. So, in many ways, he didn't really show you who he is yet, because for eternity, 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 you will still discover who he is. There's no boring day in heaven, if you can call it the concept of day, concept of time. No boring day, because for eternity you will still not know the fullness of who he is. You will see the fullness of him, but to discover his beauty, to discover who he really is, you will take eternity for that. Awesomeness of God. Amen. Amen. But start now, man. Don't waste your time. Don't do nothing with the freedom that God has given you. Freedom to get into truth, and that truth will live in and through you. So, he knew Jesus was there. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. You better tell people, Jesus is here. You better tell people, God is here. So, with evangelism, yes... The traditional way you can go, if God says to you, you tell the person, God loves you. You are precious to him. But maybe, maybe you must tell somebody, even that don't believe in Christ, say, God is here. You want to say anything to him? God is here. You want to ask him anything? Ah, oh, go and do that this week, man. Go and tell one person. Uh, sorry to bother. God is here. Anything you want to ask him? Is that too freaky? Hopefully not. Well, they told him, they told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. He couldn't see him. That atheist cannot see him. That blind guy in, deceived by all his whatever rubbish, he cannot see him. You better go and tell him, uh, God is here. Don't let him pass you by. He's passing here. Don't let him pass you by. Anything you want to say? He called out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And then, they say, shh. Those who led the way rebuked him and told him to be quiet. Rebuked him. Your flesh will say, shh. The fear will say, shh. The disappointment of when you stepped out in faith and trusted God for healing, trusted God for breakthrough, trusted God for this stuff, trusted God to how to understand all these things. You did it before, and all those voices was a shh, shh, and then, but 
he shouted, All the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Shout over your fears, over your anxiety, over the, 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 the limitations, over the disappointments. Go over all of that and shout even more when they are rebuking you and say, Shh. not just when somebody encourages you, then you shout more. When somebody encourages more, you, then you pray more. Oh, that's necessary. But when you see a discouragement, when you see opposition, when you see a shh, I'm really going to spend time with God. And immediately all the other voices, yeah, you said it before, blah, 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 blah. Get into the word. I don't understand what I'm reading. I'm really tired. Um, just let your spirit scream over, over all these other voices. Because there will be voices in your soul, my brother, my sister, every time. There will be voices that tell you to shush, to shut up. When there's actually, but in your spirit, there's a cry out to the living God. Your spirit is crying out to the living God. Don't bully your spirit with your soul. They say, I will not bully my spirit with my soul. Yeah, man. With the tantrums and the emotions and all of those stuff. Have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and ordered the man to be brought to him. And Jesus said, what do you want me to do for you? Now here's a man crying out to God, saying, God help me. He's blind. Brought him. What do you want me to do for you? I mean, Jesus has healed uh, 300 people or 1,000 people already that was blind. I mean, what is the situation here? Je okay, Jesus can see. This man is blind. What do you want me to do? <laughs> Jesus knew what had to happen. But he wants him to speak. He wants him to share. He wants to relate to him. He wants to relate to him. God is wanting to relate. He knows. He knows everything you need, the word says. But still he says, you must pray. Give us today our daily bread. I don't know why. A good father. The son doesn't ask me. I'm not going to give him anything. No, 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 no. Not, uh, it's not spiteful. This, what it's all about here is God wants him to relate. To relate. To relate. My brother, my sister. Because with this thing, this tongue, with my tongue, it will be lit by the fire of heaven. Holy Spirit came down. It was like fire. Hello? But my tongue will be lit from hell. The scripture says. Major capacity. There's a link from hell to my tongue. My tongue is connected with hell. Finish. It's connected. Because otherwise, how can it be lit if it's not a connection? So it's not about it's not connected. It's connected. Any moment, any second, the fire from hell can be here. Pew. I cannot say break the connection. It's... Uh, I don't know if I'm 100%, but go, go with me on this one. You cannot break the connection. Why? Because any time the devil can speak and you can hear what he's saying. It's not like you will now be eternally deaf. You cannot hear what the devil is saying. You're on earth, you'll always be able to hear what the devil is saying. Your tongue will be connected with hell. And it will be connected with heaven. But you decide. What fire will come through? You decide what fire will come through. Within a split second, the fire from hell will be in your mouth. <laughs> split second, it will be from heaven. But let it be the fire of the Holy Spirit. That's why you need to put a God in front of your mouth. We say in English, for your mouth, eh? You better put it here. You better put it here. You cannot just say what you want. Okay, are you with me? But how will you make sure that the fire will flow from heaven and not from hell? By putting the heart between heaven and your mouth. 
that from your heart will flow. The fullness of what is in your heart will flow out of your mouth. Hey? But the heart van follows the mond van oor. Oh, give that to me in English. The mouth flows over with... Oh, man. <laughs> give your man a hand. <laughs> okay. Some of the overflow. But let it be the overflow of the fire of God in your heart. Where it's not apathy, but there's enthusiasm. You are alive because the fire of God is alive in your heart. And that fire, from that place of fire, your mouth is, it's lit. your words is just coming forth from the fire of God. Fire of God. Fire of God. Your words will suffocate you. Your words will destroy you. That's the fire from hell. Or your words will beautify you. The fire of God will beautify you, will make you a, a, a witness. When the Holy Spirit will come upon you, you will be my witnesses. The fire of God will beautify you. The fire of God will give you the words to go through. The fire of God will set people free. It will not be you, it will be a Holy Spirit and His anointing on you. Amen. Amen. Let's say it will not be the fire of hell, it will be the fire of the Holy Spirit. Through my words. So your tongue is a very, 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 very dangerous thing. Very dangerous thing. Because it's sensitive to hell and it's sensitive to heaven. It's the rudder, ne? The rudder. Rudder. Like other. Rudder. Okay. Rudder. For the big ship. Don't fight against the ship. Don't fight against the ship in the wrong direction. Just change with the truth that I, I will say what he's saying. So if from my word, mouth there's such a major potent situation, how billion times more when it's from his mouth and I say what is coming from his mouth. Oh man. So with his rudder. If you feel the about everything, the circumstance, everything is going into this direction. You start, you start, you just start. It will change. You just start. Don't go and study three words and uh, three scriptures and you speak it forth and you pray four times in faith and you believe that whang, it has turned around and the whole ship went like this. Whang. There we go. Why would we, and, and if it didn't happen, I didn't have faith. Because I believe that it will happen like that. Okay? You must have faith, but don't be stupid. Are you with me? Because many times, you change it, the ship will go like that, 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 that. that. Don't give up on the way. And halfway, you just leave the rudder, and there you go. Hey, totally in a different direction. Where the cuckoos are you going? Are you with me? Keep on. Keep on. Speak. Speak the truth. Speak the truth and go with God. Amen. When they say, Shh, you scream in your, from your spirit. You scream. You cry out to God even louder. When the voices in your soul say, Shh, by not saying it like that, but just that feeling of apathy. I've tried that before. You don't say that, but it's just there. That system is there to keep you in that place. We're not really excited. You know, there's one thing about the guys when, with our other, other African brothers. Oh, man, and some guys. You know, it's like Dr. Jonathan always said that. And you go to Africa, and you haven't said a sentence yet, and they say, Amen! Amen! Yeah, and hallelujah. You know, and they speak it. And he said, then he come to England. And I thought he would think there's death in the church because it's just silence. They just sit there. You know? <laughs> Are you with me? Oh, we need to learn from one another a little bit. What's, what's your problem? You... Sutu and Nigerians, you're supposed to lead us into this. Yeah, 
What's your, what's your problem now? We must get all this, all this whitey thing out. I'm serious. Manzare? Uh, you're also silent there in Sierra Leone. Oh. Don't look so very white to me. <laughs> so no, man, we need to learn from one another, but that needs to come back. Are you with me? Yeah, we need to learn all from one another, but that... Yeah. You, some of you guys must come and sit in the first service, African service. And even if you don't know what I'm saying, just scream amen every five minutes. <laughs> come and challenge some tradition. Okay, God will help us. So, he even cried louder when the people said, shh. And Jesus said, what do you want me to do for you? And I'm ending up, ending with that. What do you want me to do for you? God is stopping. He's standing, looking at you, and he's saying today, what do you want me to do for you? What is the hope? Do you acknowledge me as the hope? Do you acknowledge me as the one that with me all things are possible? Or do you not believe that I spoke the truth when I said all things are possible with me? But because you acknowledge who he is and you respect that he was not a liar in what he said. He spoke the truth because you believe in his integrity. Because you have respect for him and you believe that what he said is true. Not you have faith for everything to change, but you have faith that what he said was true. That all things are possible. So you ask because of who he is. You ask because you respect who he is. You ask because you believe he spoke the truth when he said all things are possible. You don't speak, you don't pray because you believe your faith is so excellent. But you pray because you believe that he is excellent. Amen. Oh, please, man. God is saying prophetically to you today, what do you want me to do? God, help us to hear your voice. Help us, Holy Spirit, to hear what you have to say. God, you know everything that we need, but still, you want us to voice accurately that what is coming from the heart. Teach us such a life. Forgive us for apathy. Forgive us for just going through the motions. Just going through life. God, forgive us where that wasn't a life with hope. But God, we will, right now, we choose as a group, where two or more agree with your word, so it will be. So we agree today, all things are possible. You can take this apathy away. You can take this going through the motions, doing all the right stuff, but not putting our life into it. God, come and take that away, please. I pray that for each one of us. Set us free, Lord. But God, help us that we will not use the freedom just to flirt with our soul all over the place. But that we will use the opportunity, the freedom, to get into the quality of your truth. The quality of who you are. So that we will live according to truth. That we'll, we will speak only the truth, Lord. And from that place. To find a fulfillment of contentment that's from you and from you alone. I thank you, my Lord, that it will be so in Jesus' name. And all say, Amen. Amen.